Okay, so let's preview the front end in our browser. You can see it looks um, exactly like the example I showed you earlier. So we've got settings, name, and then our save button. So now that we have the initial form created or the front end created, we can go ahead and accept or start to uh, handle the events when the save button is clicked. So the jQuery here is pretty simple. The first thing that we want to do is check for an event handler. So we're going to use a selector to select this button here, this save button. So it'll be hash save button. Now when that's clicked, we need to run a function. And let's just pull that down. Inside here we need to do three things. The first thing we need to do is grab the name or the value of the elements on our page. So uh, grab values. Now the first one is going to be name and obviously you can add subsequent values depending on how many fields exist in your form. So for, for now we just have var name and then we're going to use a selector name dot val and that's going to return the value of this field here this name field into this variable name what we then want to do is show loading text and essentially all we're doing here is we are changing the let's say save status span to the text loading so save status dot text loading now you might wonder why we create the loading um, text into here and then we continue now this is all really what we this is all we need really for a loading for loading text to be displayed we essentially just pop the text save status into here so for example now if I was to press this button you have this loading text here now when the Ajax request or the HTTP request is complete we can then change the text of this and uh, update that to that we've successfully saved or that there's been an error and therefore in the meantime while while the Ajax request is loading and, and uh, the data is being sent this will always be displayed so that's an easy way to create our loading uh, symbol or you know this could even be dot uh, HTML and you could go ahead and place some kind of image in there uh, that would you know show the uh, loading status of it uh, some websites use images and now we want to send uh, or perform HTTP requests and this is the post request so we're sending post data to settings.php okay so before we do anything else and before we start to send this data from here into our settings.php file Let's go ahead and set up init.php, which stands for initialization or initiation. And the first thing we want to do is start a session. Uh, this is so we can make use of sessions. Uh, like I said previously, you may, have, may already have some kind of system to do this. Um, well, this may be implemented already. My session name is going to be user ID, and this is going to be equal to one. Now this would vary depending on which user is logged in. However, I only want to update where one uh, where one exists as a user in the database, and that is just for the simple reason uh, that we're not going to be creating a whole registration system just in this tutorial. The next thing we want to do is connect to the MySQL server, and we are connecting to localhost. The username is root, and the password in this case is nothing. Uh, I'm then going to select a specific database uh, and that is jQuery as we've already seen in PHP my admin the database name is jQuery okay so now that we've done that we don't need that file anymore uh, to be open we don't need to well we will leave it open but we don't need to type anything else in there settings.php is going to include this init file so init.php because inside settings we're passing the values using post so we're passing this value inside of here to settings.php so we need to include our database and session data in order to update our database correctly okay so inside ajax.js we need to send some data to a file that which is our first parameter 
and that is php forward slash settings.php that's this file here the next thing we need to do is specify which data we are actually sending uh, and the variable name so I'm going to call the variable name remember this is the name we pick up in PHP and then I'm going to send the data as this which is the name we picked up from here so this is the variable name that we pick up in settings.php and this here is the actual value which is the name retrieved from the name field in our page I'm then going to create a callback function and give this a value of data and remember data is the value that has been returned from settings.php so this will either data will now either be something like uh, successfully updated your settings or could not update your settings so with data we want to go ahead and put that into an area on our page so we use a selector we select save status status and then we say dot text data so whatever is returned from settings.php will now be put into save status which remember is where this loading text is now so that will override this loading text here and then the loading will only be shown while the request is in place after the request has finished here the save status here will be changed to the data return from settings.php so an easy way to create a loading um, message while we're loading this uh, page 